to now. So welcome to Fabric Chicks Live. Um, you know it's always kind of crazy here, but we'd like to welcome, we have Leilani Purvis here today. Um, she also was here with us on Monday and she painted a canvas and I'm kind of surprised she didn't finish her project with her painted canvas from Monday. That Two days, who needs more than two days to finish a project, right girls? I'm quick, I'm not that quick. <laughs> So we're excited, we're looking forward to seeing that when you get it done. Yes. But today we're gonna to be talking about lace and lace embellishment and how you incorporate it in your quilts and your artwork. Okay, take it away. All right. Well, lace is, can really, really highlight your, your different collage items. This is just a small project I did just to play around with taking lace cutting out little bits of it and incorporating it into the piece. So as you can see here, I just cut up little, little bits and that highlights kind of these crazy little flowers that I did. Up here, I even cut into the extension of the lace and if the lace has a leaf or a flower, use that to your advantage. So I added that on the stems. I've even used edges of lace. Like this in here. If you have a little netting area, use that to your advantage. Use it as a, a texture, <clears throat> excuse me, or an accent. So you can see where this could actually be cut out and made into a stem. You can cut these little flowers out and make that into another flower. And then when you go to stitch it with your thread, you can add color or more dimension and depends. So you guys just did a whole thread um, class with the class. different weights, yeah. So you, you start incorporating those um, thicker threads and you can really add some dimension to that. So that's kind of what I did with this piece. This piece. So I don't know if you guys can see this up close, but like right here, she went in with a brown thread and actually thread painted the veins of the leaves. So that it, it, Show it again, please. so that it looks <clears throat> like it's an attachment from the whole project, not just, and you can see it here, the brown, she's got the brown thread attaching the stem to the flower here and then the leaf here also so that it, it flows together and it looks like it's a part of the actual flower as opposed to just being thrown on there as an addition. It's coming from the flower. So the thread also is holding those so it, it just pulls the whole project together. And that was just my experimentation was really how many different pieces of the lace I could use and also adding the thread as accent. And so, um, Ann Lindemeyer wants to know how you how do you keep it from unraveling? It never unraveled on me and sometimes the stitching you can reinforce it by your stitching if, especially if you're using a thinner thread. <clears throat> I used a little glue yeah, I think if it starts to unravel, I would just even um, hand stitch just to catch the few strands that are unraveling. But I mean, it's art quilts. You're probably not going to wash it, so you don't have to worry. You might like that te the texture of it unraveling. So, so this piece, I I found this lace, and I'm going okay. This this lace definitely has leaf shapes. So rather then using it as a whole, I decided to actually use it in the leaf shape. So I had some upholstery fabric that I wanted to play around with. And so I just incorporated these leaf um, pieces of this lace. So then it becomes like an applique piece. Right, mm -hmm. exactly, mm -hmm. that you can see through. So you can, you can see the fabric underneath, then again, I added your different color threads mm -hmm. to blend it into the background or highlight it. That's perfect and it does give it a lot of extra dimension and texture. 
and it is loose. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it will move. So you could even use this technique on a piece of wearable art, um, like a jacket or a vest, because typically you're not ever gonna wash that piece of wearable art. Um, you're only gonna wear it to quilt shows most likely. So you could definitely add dimensional um, laces to your artwork, whether it's wearable or hanging on the wall. There's so many cool pieces of lace out now. Um, some of them have the, um, the sequins or the pearls, so you can work that into um, a piece. And like this piece here, you could cut out and put like right here or in a koala's ear or, you just have to think of things differently. Like I wouldn't, I would never buy this to put on the collar of my dress, although I could. But I wouldn't, but I, in my head, I would think about what I could cut it apart to use it for for something else. This reminds me of my gunny sack days. Do you remember? <laughs> like my prom, I had a gunny sack dress made out of all this nice. lace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and same with, this is a very open, um, it has more of an organza look, but it has that beautiful lily. So you could either cut the lily out or keep some of this organza in here and work it into a piece. And this organza would have been a good option to just save and use as the yeah. spooky clouds in your Halloween that you showed us on Monday. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So don't ever throw anything away, girls. No, I, I have a whole tote of lace, lace pieces, tool, um, and then, um, do you, let me just show them there. Do you use color threads on top of the lace? Yes, yes she does, girls. Yeah. Here, let's show you this one up close. Can you see that where she's got the colorful threads? Because there's so much color going on in the background. Does it show up? I believe so. And then look at how she's also brought the colored threads and just done some thread painting here to tie it into the lace. And then the same thread she used on this leaf to tie the whole, the whole project together. And that's all free motion quilting. You, it's your own design. So you follow the pattern of the lace or you can go off and do something else. Karen, I know you can relate to me being drugged to the gunny sack outlet. It was like eight stories high in San Francisco. It was crazy. I don't think it even exists anymore. Now this piece um, was a Lorraine Turner uh, thread painting class that I incorporated um, a lot of organza, uh, obviously a lot of thread painting, but what was fun with this is I did incorporate some lace into the ears of the kitten. And when I looked at all my laces, you know, you start imagining, is this going to be a kitten's ear? Is this going to be a uh, flower? Is it gonna be a leaf? So you just work it into whatever you can imagine. That turned out stunning. And this was a class with Lorraine. Did you say that already and I wasn't yeah. paying attention? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, I was trying to read comments. It's hard to multitask. Nobody should She's ever like multitask. She's a teenager. She can't. I know. I can't stay focused. That's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. So that was just a touch of lace. Then again, but you don't you don't see it as lace. You see it as a kitten's ear, and I think that's really kind of the secret behind using this. And Shirley says, send her your scraps. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> Now this was um, another Lorraine Turner class that I did. This was the Lake Tahoe retreat last summer. And we learned how to use lace, but also make our own lace. So all of this down here was made with the machine and a water soluble um, material. So you layer the water soluble and you stitch and then it dissolves. So basically your thread becomes the lace. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you make it as dense or as loose as you want. And then I, I did my own lace here. I layered it with lace, more of my lace, 
and then topped it off with a uh, open. So really, you can never have too much lace, girls. Start stocking up. Yes, yes. And Anne, you're right, the eyes are tricky, but she did an amazing job on the cat eyes. But she did take a class with Lorraine on all about eyes. Yeah. So if you're, if you're just getting into kind of art, doing art quilts and you say, oh, I can't do eyes or I can't do faces or I can't do, if you can't do anything, it really is just practice. And we all had to start somewhere. None of us typically are artists at least not most of the quilters that I know, they don't begin as artists. They begin as somebody just wanting to sew two pieces of fabric together. And then we just kind of branch out and the more you practice and the more you experiment and the more classes you take, the more your world will just open up and you'll realize that really you are a lot more artistic than you think. And most of us use patterns. We don't come up with our own original stuff. Okay, go back to Leilani. She's, she's got another project. <gasps> I love it. So this was... I've never seen this one. This is Rise and Shine. Yeah, you probably haven't seen this No. Uh, Lorraine Turner pattern. Um, but we, cho we chose our own fabric, and I wanted it to look frosty. So that is when... Let me lay this. That's when I incorporated something like this to give it that icy look down here, right? This I incorporated in here just to give it a little glitter, a little frosty look. Kind of like the wind's blowing snow across the piece. Yeah. So this is mm -hmm. just a piece. And then again, you have to kind of Think of lace as other things. So this is more of the wind blowing. Something like that, right? And this looked like mountain tops to me with snow. It totally does. I would not have thought of that. Yeah. So but it does here, it's perfect here. Just work that into there. So in this instance, I didn't add it to the bears itself, themselves. I incorporated it with the background. And this is multi-layers. And, and it really does look like a snowstorm behind them. It's, can you zoom up or did you already? Sounds good. It's incredible, like the wind is blowing here. It, literally is incredible like you feel like you're in the middle of a snowstorm and that's that's the illusion i wanted to portray because polar bears live in a cold climate hi diana um betsy says good thing i never get rid of old lace and trims in the process of organizing all my trims and laces well now you'll think of it differently betsy you, you really will kind of just have a different eye when you're looking at your, your laces. Okay, and another frosty look. Um, okay, wait one second. Leilani, thank you for sharing your talent and your time. Uh, that swan is beautiful. This is all new to me, exciting to learn new things. Your bear still work, uh, Shirley says she's still working on hers. <laughs> Shirley, I'm right there with you. I have an 83 billion project started. I have good intentions though. That was my goal, finish, finish, finish. Yes. Um, Rondi says, wonderful work, thank you for sharing, um, beautiful, so inspiring, beautiful details. Wow, that is an awesome background with lace, and Season's watching, thanks for joining us, Season. Hi, Season. Hi, Sarah. And we, on. Oh, Sarah, you never know, she, can't, she only gets internet, like, sporadically. That's what you said. They live in the boonies. Yeah. Um, but we do have the polar bear pattern, we do have that for sale, so if you're interested in it, we can add that to your basket. Okay, what do we have next? Another frosty look. So this is uh, Joyful Greetings. And then again, I incorporated a lot of um, swirls and uh, glitter to the sky to make it look like a snowy, snowy scene. Mm -hmm. And then also the snow drifts. 
<clears throat> down below with the animals and the sleigh. So here we've got all kinds of, here I'll hold it and you can point out the features. <laughs> One of these days we'll figure out a good system. <laughs> Then again, this was all an experiment. I started with the sleigh, and I actually found this uh, lace that was perfect. It looked like it was like intricate woodwork into a sleigh. So I cut it out to fit, fit that. Um, and then again, I used the real swirly open lace. This is the same type that I used in the polar bear and it's also covered in a little bit of organza like this has multi multi lace in here plus thread thread painting and up here again we have this um fran harris you definitely need to attempt it it's so much fun it's very addictive so it it covers it kind of covered that sun a little bit so you just have to look at things a little differently, work it into your piece to give it a either a frosty look or a feminine look, whatever look you're look going for. And the thing oh, yeah, is, down here. I had it on a little girl. And you you have to have a stash. If you didn't have all of this in right. your sewing room when you went to create this, you would be at a loss. Right. You wouldn't. So girls, this is your lesson to be a hoarder and start collecting. <laughs> Um, wait, I would, um, Diana wants to see it up close. Can we get it up closer? Should I hold it or lay it down? Um, um, I think hold it is probably better. Um, hey, Christy, don't you know to not plan your Costco trip during our live? <laughs> Susan says she loves the lace on the sleigh. How does one start a lace collection? Well, Mary, don't worry. We're gonna show you some laces that we have available for sale later. Um, Debbie says, I really like how you use the lace with the white and bears to create a windblown snowy winter scene. It is perfect, Debbie. It is so realistic. Um, it definitely gives you the illusion that you're in the middle of a storm. Do you use clear thread to, for the snow look? Yes. I use some clear and then I did like a light pink. Oh, oh. So why would you use a light pink? Because it was kind of a lavender pink hand dyed or batik that I used in the background uh -huh. and I thought it would blend better. I thought the gray might be too harsh. Uh -huh. which might add a little, mm -hmm. little color to it. Yeah. So you just kind of play with your, your thread. So you gotta play with it and see what looks right for your project. Just like when um, I'm long arming, I typically pull out 10 different grays or 10 different whatever spools and lay it out because what you think will work sometimes doesn't. And I probably never would have thought to use pink, but sometimes you do need it to be toned down. Sometimes you want it to stand out more. Or you could Maybe use the clear lavender. monopoly. Light lavender. Oh yeah, light lavender, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's slick. And you really don't notice it until you get up close. But that's kind of what makes great art is when you don't notice something and it just blends into the piece and accentuates it the way it should. Mm -hmm. So those are the frosty look. Um, we were talking about the uh, doing the organza for the cloud. So that's how. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, so this really doesn't have lace in it, but it does have, you could incorporate lace if you wanted to work it into, like if you had green lace, you could make it into the pumpkin leaves or part of the landscape. So kind of rethink your all different colors of lace. I've been using mostly white, but lace comes in every shade of the Rainbow. Yes, so, it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can also often dye it yourself. And a lot of times I, I don't have the patience for dyeing necessarily, but I'll just paint it with the same paints that I paint my canvas with. 
I'll just paint it. Or like the other day I was doing an, a bedazzled flower and I needed some furry stuff in the center and I only had white. So I took a pink Sharpie marker and I just colored over all the fibers. So just remember it's art, it, it's gonna hang on your wall. You just wanna get the effect you wanna get and you don't care how you get it. You wanna go koala or wave? Um, wait, what do you say? You wanna go koala or wave next? It, either one, which do you wanna do? Well, I'll do koala, okay. the smaller. Okay, so the koala, um, we showed you on Monday, and this was Lorraine Turner from CalicoHorses.com, um, her challenge, and it benefited the Ips Ipswich Koalas in Australia. It was a fundraiser, um, and Lorraine, uh, Leilani won first place in the judged event for her koala. So that's pretty exciting. Um, You definitely can use colored tools. Here, do you want me to hold it and then you can show? It's so hard, your comments come so fast and then some of them I miss. So don't get mad if I miss your comment. <laughs> um, basically, yes, this was a, um, a black and white pattern from Lorraine. And we were able to, we were supposed to use 50% of her Calico Horses line um, by Free Spirit of her fabric line which I did, um, and that's what's most of this area into here is all calico horses, all calico horse fabrics into here, um, and also down here. But then I embellished with uh, hand dyes for the tree, sari, sari silk for the leaves, aboriginal fabrics, Kind of balanced out everything <clears throat> but then again i wanted the koala's ears to look fluffy and it was either a choice of yarn or wool or you know something but i had this on hand i had this uh <laughs> this lady just happened to be in her stash i happen to have it and it, it as i was playing with it because there's like three different pieces here just to get the movement of the, the fluffy ear. So I didn't just lay it on there as one piece, I cut it in several pieces so I could get this little tuft here and this direction going this way. And sometimes you can lay a, a piece of lace down, but if you reverse it, it gives you that other direction and maybe even a totally different look. But you don't have to use something the way it's supposed to be. You can use it the back side. So that's what. So many options. So many options. <laughs> so that's the koala ears. And then this one, um, did you draw out your design prior to doing the collage? The collage was a pattern. Um, the koala itself. Okay. And then, oh, Ann Linda Meyer, you cracked me up. She says, I love, I love best techniques. Just throw it on your project, it will work. <laughs> I just toss it all Yeah, way. hope for the best, girls, hope for the best. Um, Rosie says, that's beautiful, thank you for sharing. Love how you're using the white lace. I had to take netting out of the trash from the fruit package my daughter had thrown away. Very I'm good. starting a new bag of stuff. And Diana says, you could put a color tool over the lace to change the color all the time mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. and then surely what i don't if it's something that leilani showed we haven't showed you any of our panels those are all her original artworks uh, mary wants to know if you're going to make a pattern of what of what mary um and christy says oh my gosh leilani that's amazing shirley says buy mm -hmm. wedding veils and wedding laces yeah. and beth has lace trim um and Oh, Christy had to go to Costco because they have the hundred, they have the advent wine calendars in right now. Oh my goodness. Okay, I might have to run over there this afternoon. I'm um, gonna head over there. And I, oh, Karen, good job. She went for a walk before the live. You girls, remember to exercise. Um, the, yeah, the pumpkins, the pumpkins that Leilani showed were her own original pattern. And I am trying to tell her, she actually had the idea herself, but 
um, I'm, I'm encouraging her to make a pattern so that you guys can, um, can purchase the pattern from her so you can make a fun little project like that. Yeah, I have it kind of written out, so I will try to finish that. Um, I want to do a pattern of this and also my uh, joyful greetings. The one with the sleigh and the tree and the little girl. Mm -hmm. So I want to do a pattern of that. Perfect. Also. Perfect. And maybe we can talk her into doing Zoom classes. You just never know, girls. Yes, you never know. You never know, huh, Anne, what I might talk you into. <laughs> Just be ready, I guess, huh? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, and then we have one, well, do you want to show them any of your lace? She's got a box of lace treasures. So is this all your lace here, or do you have more? So Leilani lives in two different houses. She's a snowbird in Arizona in the winter, so it probably is pretty hard for her to keep track of her stuff because she's got to leave half of it behind. Yeah, so I pretty much have to pick and choose. My whole goal was all this had to fit into one little tote. Um, but with lace, of course, it doesn't take up that much space. So just um, as you see things, like I think this is supposed to be a collar piece, you know, for a sweater mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Is I this cream very dark? She said it's hard to see. Do you need to get closer? Probably because I'm lighting. lighting. Do you want me to turn the lights off? No, lights on. More lights. lights on. Diana says you need to start selling your design. So girls, we tried to come upstairs today to see if it would be less distracting if we were upstairs. So we're not really sure about the lighting because the ceilings are real high. It's a big loft area. And then we have these behind us. And so we closed them thinking that would avoid the glare. But tell me if it looks better this way. Here's some black lace. Or he can, I don't know. No. <laughs> okay, that's no. not better. That's worse. No, close them. They're all saying better. No, okay, if they say better. <laughs> okay, show the Halloween one again. Okay. Karen that's and it. Mary say it's better with more lighting. But I, I don't really think it is. I On mine, it looks dark again. Well, there's such a delay, we have no idea, girls. We have no idea. <laughs> I'm thinking if maybe if you go over there or something, but I don't know. Here, what if we flip? Too much of a shadow now. Someday we're going to hire real photographers. Yay. Okay, I'll just over here. I think it's better over there. Beth, you need to go over there too. I'll pull the table off. Oh. We'll, we'll have to move this chair down. I don't really need to be over there with her. They know what I look like. You're still dark and I'm focused on you too. Okay. All right, so I've made a um, pattern of the pumpkins, the ghosts, the black cat. I don't know if you see the black cat way over here. I'll zoom in on it. And you can choose any fabrics you want. Like this is upholstery fabric, but you could actually use a grunge or maybe a combination of a grunge with an overlay to give it a kind of a spooky uh, moonlit night. Um, and then you can choose whatever fabrics you want as your landscaping. I have a fabric that looked like a moonlit cactus or out in the desert. So there's like this area here, but you could choose whatever you wanted. And as I was looking through my photos this morning, pumpkins aren't always orange. There's some cool pumpkins now that mm -hmm. are blue and purple and white. So you could do this whole pattern in a whole nother colorway. So you could do the purples, the pinks, mm -hmm. the blues, and still give it kind of that spooky look. Right. They're called fairy tale pumpkins. Yeah. I know. I bought one. They're so cool. Like the kids were like two, and I went to Apple Hill and I bought a fairy tale pumpkin like this big. Yeah. And then when I got up there, it was sixty dollars. <laughs> um, my most expensive pumpkin ever. But it was so cool. It was like grays and pinks. It and, is. It is. Yeah. They yep. have the coolest pumpkins. Mm -hmm. So just go on online and 
I don't know, look up pumpkins and they have all different kinds of pumpkins. Some are really gnarly looking. They look like they have warts on them. Or you could incorporate gourds, um, gourds mm -hmm. exactly, or mm -hmm. squash. And gourds might be fun to do with Texture Magic because oh. they, they could shrink up and be all gnarly. I know, the mm -hmm. whole gnarly look. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Kern, for your compliment. <laughs> they said it's much better away from the window. Oh, good. That has so much more texture than I saw in the picture. Oh. It do, it really does. Like they're, the vines are dimensional. There's some tool here. It does, like this is dimensional here. The silks are kind of like scrunched up and then um, couched on, or if you're not familiar with couching, it's also kind of like tacked. And then here is like black netting from her ham or something. And lots of tulle. There is a ton of dimension in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I, I did remember, I this is a whole nother piece of fabric that looked like the ground and if you've ever gone to a pumpkin farm or gourd farm, it's the dirt is all um, plowed up, obviously, because they've harvested all this uh, material. So that's the effect I wanted here. But then again, if you want it green and mm -hmm. you know make it more of a daytime thing and, and not have the moon, you could do that too. The options oh. are limitless, girls. And you don't have to have an owl. You could have a crow. Mm-hmm. Or a raven. Or a raven. Mm-hmm. And then here she's got a skeleton that she cut out of, it was already on the fabric. So she just, kind of like a pre-printed panel, you just have to look at your fabrics differently and cut, use them to, to add to what you're doing. I think you... <clears throat> Fussy cut. You have to think about scale also. Um, obviously this guy needed to be small, um, but if you wanted, instead of the moon, you could do maybe a larger skeleton behind there. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty limitless what you could do. And same with the ghost. I was actually going to incorporate another ghost, but then I decided to do the moon. Mm -hmm. So you could have several ghosts on here. And they don't have to be pure white. They can, this, these all have hash marks on them. But you could do then again grunge or a tone on tone, or if you're doing the um, blue and purple theme, they could be pink. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Yeah, there are no rules. You just have to remember there are no rules. If it looks good to you, then it's good. Don't worry about if it's artistically correct or, you know, if you have to have three subjects, you can't have two. Right. If it looks good to you, then it's good. That's all, the only people we're trying to please is ourselves here. Right. Um, <clears throat> and Karen says you can get the fairy tale um, pumpkins now at Trader Joe's. She mm -hmm. just got a white one for $8.99. Such a steal from when I got it 10 years ago at ha Apple Hill, the overpriced pumpkin. Well, it was it, I about fell it's over when they, yeah, I about <laughs> fell over when they told me the price. I was like, oh, okay. How bad do you want this pumpkin? <laughs> very bad, very, very bad. bad. I had my heart set on the pumpkin. Uh, I mean, that's a whole nother color scheme there. Yes, yeah. yes. So anyway, you, these are pieces, so you could actually do the pieces different colors, start with a darker, go lighter, then again, mm -hmm. pretty endless. It is, it's definitely endless. Okay, so I've got a couple of questions for you. I brought up some lace from, mm -hmm. oh no, we wanna show your wave. Oh, we'll show your wave at the end. It'll be the grand finale. Because <laughs> our arms have to like, uh, get some blood back in them because it's hard to hold stuff up. Obviously, we need to work out more. Um, so I brought up some laces from the shop just so that we could um, pick Leilani's brain and see how she might use them. So this one is a fun turquoise one. Mm. How would you incorporate, what would you incorporate that into? Well, right now, obviously, a lot of us are thinking of the holidays and so it ornament do a collage piece with an ornament you could just cut out that part and lay it onto a, uh, a white tone on tone fabric so this turquoise shows up or you could do like a light lavender or a coral then again it doesn't have to be Christmas colors correct mm -mm. there you go so think outside the box girls well and then on the other side is Easter, if you were to do like an Easter egg, 
you could do that design on part of an Easter egg. Think of it this way. <clears throat> or you could cut out the, these flowers themselves and incorporate these flowers into a collage that you have other flowers and leaves and urns or something like that. So yep, that's kind of what I would do is I would cut it just like you said, cut the like that portion of it and then kind of fussy cut it and use it as like a trellis and a collage. And sometimes you, you want to cut into this netting, mm -hmm. but not too much, obviously. It might be kind of nice to have just a touch of that netting. Well, and if you get close and just leave a little bit, it will look like a shadow. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, I got a couple more. Oh, yay. Uh, look at nothing like being put on the spot, huh? I know. Okay, but this is. I was finding fun. all kinds of weird stuff. Oh my I gosh. knew you were coming. <laughs> oh, this is gorgeous. Oh, my gosh. This has got sequins and pearls. So, you could use it vertically as like a uh, part of a border to one of your um, quilts. You could go around, put your border on, and then attach this and cut it out. And then again, it doesn't have to go to the edges. You could stop it at any point, or you could go around and then reconnect. But wouldn't that be pretty, just using in a border? Mm -hmm. Or if you didn't want it to be so thick, you can cut right down the center of it. Mm -hmm. There's, there's yeah, these like a netting here, mm -hmm. and then again, that could be part of a edge of a flower. Just that part, or then again, part of an ornament. It all depends on what crazy things your Ooh, mind may you come know up what with. Else is uh, if you were to do a sleigh, like my uh, joyful greeting sleigh, this you could actually work this into the sleigh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then that way it would look frosty okay and then i've got this one here which a lot of you have bought this one we've had this one on the sale before oh pretty well unfortunately i would cut this all up i know i know <laughs> There's so many um, features to this one because you have that beautiful tulip just in itself and you could either cut it this way or leave it whole. Can you turn it a little bit more? There you go. Okay. Now they can see the tulip. And then if you were to cut that tulip out and put it on the end of a ribbon or something, then you could cut these leaves out, put that as part of the leaf of the plant and then go back in with your thread painting and add a little green. Or like what we're starting to do with the Inktense pencils, you could add a little Inktense pencil to that and really give it some shading and some highlighting. And then you could thread paint or Inktense pencils in again, or just some kind of dyes to add color to the tulip itself. But what you'll see next on my, uh, this collage I did of a wave, I used a lot of this motif as splashes of the wave and drips of water. So then again, rethink like this right here can be droplets of water. So you kind of dissect the, the lace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. You but just it, gotta think outside the box. You do. But this is gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. Karen says her realtor just sent digital documents for them to sign and she told her husband they, they had to wait till we were over. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that we take top priority. Where are you moving to, Karen? <clears throat> and, oh, Christy's at Seas Candy. Uh -oh. oh my goodness. Bring us some. Yeah, bring us some. Um, okay, we... Um, we'll see you later, Rondi. So if you add your, your netting either behind, you could cut around it and kind of give it a really 
look behind it or over top if you're going to use it more of a tool then it, it gives a more subtle look mm -hmm. oh, my friend. okay so we've got one more pro oh, we do have these so I noticed I went and grabbed these these are embellishment kits that I saw was in Leilani's box of treasures that she packed from Oregon. Yes, I did. So yes, these are kind of good because it just gives you a, a little bit of variety of a whole bunch of different textures and um, different things. And we're not having a sale this Friday, although we are interviewing Barbara Pershing, who is a fabric designer, I want to say for Island Boutique. Ooh, I hope I got that right. Um, She's a fabric designer for boutiques. She designs boutiques, and she um, is the designer of uh, Gathering, which is the quilt quilt that we show pretty frequently, and the Bliss. So she, we'll be interviewing her on Friday, so I'm, we're excited about that. But no sale, because we just need to get a grip on life. A grip on life. Doesn't that sound good? So wouldn't that be pretty to see that? Mm-hmm. An ornament or something. This has just got some glitter in it. So pretty. Then a plain white lace all of a sudden kind of comes to life with that reflective. Sparkly and shiny and so sparkly. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. all about sparkly. I know. You can never get too much sparkle in your life. <laughs> okay, let's see what the let's see. The next project. So she hasn't had time to bind this yet. Um, but it's got a lot of lace incorporated into it. So this was the, you want to show them the original picture of that? So this is the original photo, and this is a wave that Leilani's husband actually did serve. Well, maybe not this wave, oh. but in this area. In this area. Sunset Cliff, San Diego, California. His, one of his favorite surf spots. Yeah. Whoops. All right, so I'll hand it to you. I took that wave. So it's pretty big. Mm, and turned smoke. it into this wave. Yeah. So you're over on the, the lace side. So you want to switch? Uh, that's all right. Okay. You can point out the lace. I mean, obviously so I've cut out. We've got all. triplets of lace kind of splattering splashes of lace here. And then we've got some driplets right here. And I'm sure it came in big piece chunks of lace and she's just cut out portions of it. Mm -hmm. Hold still for a minute. So I was going to do that like in a 12 weight thread. Uh -huh. I was gonna do splashes or pieces of white fabric, but when I started thinking about it, I go, you know, that's really going to take a lot of thread work. And so I started laying some lace down, and it gave the same effect. Um, so you just cut it out and attach it, and it looks like the wave is breaking. So It's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. And Beth did the, the quilting on it with variegated thread with the whole movement of the wave. So now we've changed it from John's wave to feel the wave. Oh, I like that. Feel like the that. wave. Yeah. Yeah. Because waves of this size have a lot of power. Mm-hmm. For sure. But this is uh, a sunrise. A sunrise photo. Okay. Let's see if we got any questions. Um, we um, absolutely agree. Wow. Oh my God, that is beautiful. It, this is heavy. Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> that is be wow, beautiful. That wave is gorgeous. Wow, beautiful. So the, the reflection goes all the way. So you've got your sun here. And then as it gains um, power, swirls around and then breaks. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> all right. All right, so that's what we have. You can really see the power and the movement of the wave, Debbie said, beautiful. All right, do you girls have any other questions for Leilani? Sure.
Start building your stash. Yeah. Words of wisdom from Leilani. Build your stash because you can't use it if you don't have it. You can't play with it if, if you don't have it in front of you to cut up. <laughs> and when you're doing something like this, do you experiment with different techniques and different um, supplies, or do you just know lace is going to be great for water? I had no idea I was going to use lace until I had gotten basically the fabric down, and then I was figuring, okay, I've got to get that frosty, frosty, drippy yeah, look somehow. Yeah. And then again, I was going to do it on the machine with like a 12 weight thread to give it that look. But the lace did the work for me, and I think, and it gives it more interest, I think. I think so, too. It's a little bit of unexpected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at a distance, you, you get that feel, I think. So you could have done the, the foam of the water, the white lace, with that other technique you designed with just the thread, correct? Right. With the lace and the wash away, the thread and wash away. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. You but create it your own lace. been very consistent looking, where the lace gives you, if you if you look at water, it, it just takes on all different forms. And I feel the there are areas here that it's more dense than others. This is a more open look. <coughs> Some of these are just edges, mm -hmm. just edges of lace. And this is what I was talking about when you cut up that lace, that it might be a leaf or a flower, but in this instance, it's it's water splashing. So, mm -hmm. like perfect. This, this up here is just a cute little lace. Mm -hmm. But this really looks like water. Right? Definitely, like a little droplet right. right here. You've got a very definite droplet. Right. So sometimes you want to cr create an illusion, and sometimes you want it to be more precise. Mm -hmm. But it's all just experimenting. Yeah. None of us, and, and even you think, oh my gosh, I love their work. They played with different stuff. They never, I can guarantee you, did not go into their closet and pick out the perfect thing the first time. You gotta audition what you have in your stash. You have to, um, you know, move it around. Sometimes you get it stitched on and then you throw something on top of it or rip it off. I personally would throw something on top of it because I'm too lazy to rip it out. Well, basically this, this in some places may have eight layers of fabric because mm -hmm. I, I laid one in like this as a background and then I started layering on top of that. Mm -hmm. And maybe I needed more accent. I needed a darker. So you just start laying it in there and that's why another reason why it's heavy. Right, <laughs> it, it is so heavy girls, so heavy. <laughs> All right, so we'd really like to thank Leilani for coming and spending the afternoon with us. If you girls have any questions, always feel free to put them in here. Leilani also um, kind of um, stays tuned to what's going on at Fabric Chick. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. Um, as with most quilters and, and people that we hang out with, um, they are more than happy to share their information and, you know, help you get started. Everybody wants to see everybody get started. I want to see your lace and, yes. your, and your overlay. Oh, that's a good one. Take a photo of your lace collection and post it. Yeah. That would be exciting to yes. see. And then we'll all give you ideas of what or what not to do with it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, I can remember back um, when we were, when I was young, my girlfriend's mom had a big tub of lace and she made all their underwear. But it was horrible. It was horrible granny underwear oh, with no. little tiny bits of lace and ugh. Uh, the back in the day when moms made underwear. Um, all right, so um, thank you for joining us. We will see you on Friday at noon. And thank you again, Leilani. It thank was great you. to, it's it fun. always fun to have somebody new and showing us different ideas because I'm sure they get bored of me. <laughs> um, all right, we'll see you at Friday at noon. Thank you. Thank you.